Hey, comic lovers, E-Money, the old man, and Thor the Dog of Thunder here. Hey, buddy. Hey, we took, or I took, Thor out on a walk earlier today. Yeah, you were oh, a good boy. Oh, it is. It's a few minutes ago. Yeah, you were it's a good boy. still out of breath. Yeah. He uh, saw a couple people, didn't see any other dogs, really, but uh, he was good. He was very well behaved, weren't you, boy? Weren't you? Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we're out here in our weekly garage sale, and, uh, or I should say pop-up comic shop, we don't like to call it garage sale, and I uh, had a good day today, and hoping we have uh, another good day next week, and we're going to be talking about that a little later on. Also, we have, uh, well, not really an update, more a continuation of one of our discussions from last week, and then we have some rumors swirling about the premiere of... Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, and we're going to give you guys a preview of what you can expect at this weekend's pop-up shop and our whatnot auction, and also we're going to be talking about comic books, uh, reviews, and previews. You kind of make that sound like an afterthought. That's what this state channel is all about, is the comic books. We're, we're going to be doing all kinds of fun stuff today, <laughs> aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. All right. She-Hulk, attorney at law. She'll kill for you. But maybe only if you're Megan the Stallion. And twerking. Yeah. But anyways, this is Back Issues. <laughs> Alright, so before we get started today, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, give us a thumbs up, and if you like, leave us a comment. Give us uh, some opinions about whatever we talk about in uh, entertainment news today, or you can give us some comment recommendations. Or you can suggest a challenge for Thor here, if you like. All right. So, uh, first up in entertainment news, we're following up on a story from last week. Last week, we shared news concerning the casting of the MCU's Mr. Fantastic, Reed Richards. So, last week, rumors were swirling that U-Star, Penn Badgley, is the frontrunner in talks to play the head of Marvel's first family. Despite popular opinions from fans that John Krasinski should return to the role. Well, one of our longtime viewers, CMC Official, in last week's video commented, the Fantastic Four news is 100% fake. Well, uh, CMC, I'm not saying you're wrong, but if it is fake, then it seems the entire internet is buying into it. I did a quick check earlier today, actually, and Penn, Bad Penn Badgley is still seems to be the front runner. Now, in the past, fans were nearly positive an actor was going to be cast in a part, and then it ended up going to someone else. So we, anything can happen. We don't know. Yeah. All I'm saying is rumors about Badgley being cast seem even stronger today than they were when we talked about it last week. So time will tell. I just want to see the movie. Let's go. All right. All right. Next up. This past weekend, the old man and I watched the two-episode premiere of Amazon's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Now, the current, the question that currently has the internet abuzz, who is the stranger? So we find out in episode two, no, I'm sorry, at the end of the first episode, an object appearing to be a meteor crashed near the encampment of the hobbit-like Harfoots, or Harfeet. I'm going to call them hobbits. Okay. We find out in episode two that it's actually a man, or something appearing as a man, and he has some kind of power. Unfortunately, he can't speak the common tongue and may have amnesia, so his identity remains a mystery. So a lot of fan theories have been making the rounds on the internet. The old man and I speculated that this may be Sauron, but... It's not who I called. But thinking about it, that seems unlikely, as Sauron is already supposed to be somewhere on Middle-earth. The popular opinion is that he is one of the five wizards. I call him Gandalf. Mm -hmm. The old man... <coughs> excuse me. The old man and I talked about him being Gandalf, and the stranger having, simil having a similar build and talking to bugs. Now, some people say that he is um, giant-like, but it's hard for me to tell with him being next to Nori the Harfoot. I mean, it looks to me like he's probably just human sound. Yeah, but Which some people are saying he, he may be giant-ish. Well, don't, 
don't the hobbits call humans giants? Yeah, I mean, they call them big folk. So, I don't know about, about the giant part. Uh, okay. Some people are speculating that it's Saruman, which is also a strong possibility. It might actually be, make even more sense than Gandalf with the way the bugs died at the end of the episode when he, after he got done talking to them. Like, you know, Gandalf doesn't do that. <clears throat> so, Sci-Fi and Fantasy Gazette's website presented another theory. What if he's a Balrog? See, uh, they, they uh, explain in the original source material, the five wizards began as Maiar spirits, but many of them were corrupted by Morgoth and turned into the fiery spirits known as the Balrog. <laughs> so it would make sense that a Balrog would take a, similar, take a form similar to that of the wizards. And like I said in our conversations, it could be somebody we don't even know about. That also true. So here's what Lord of the Rings executive producer Lindsay Weber had to say about the stranger character. The idea that this sort of miraculous event would occur in the Harfoot's backyard was one of the sort of uh, excuse me, foundational ideas from the showrunners when I joined the project. And, when, and what I can say about this character is that he is a bit of an onion with many layers to peel. And I think it will be a fun journey for fans to peel as the season goes. So, obviously it sounds like the showrunners have some surprises in store for us with this character. Well, my quick review is, first episode, very slow. Slow, yeah. Second episode, speeds it up a notch and is much better. So I think it's going to be one of those shows that as it develops, it gets better and better. Right. So, episode three of The Rings of Power drops on Amazon Prime this Friday. All right. That is going to do it for entertainment news. Now, let's head into the basement and check out some comic book reviews. All right. So, if you've never seen us grade comics before, we grade these on a five shield rating system. We, get, we each give them four score, or excuse me, we each give them two scores. One for writing and story, and the other one for artwork. And then we combine those four scores together to give it an average overall score. All right, so we have our mention. Hey, 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 what? Hey. Next time we do back issues, mm -hmm. I say we don't explain that. Don't explain. Okay. Skip it one time. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so uh, first up, we have a mention because it was a really light week this week. Yeah, very, very few books. So just one mention. Ready? That would be, Marvel once again launched a new Thunderbolts title. This is volume four of this book, and number one. All right, <clears throat> so this comes in the aftermath of Devil's Reign, when Wilson Fisk was mayor of New York. Fisk put down a uh, superhero ban order for the city of New York, uh, similar to what happened in Civil War, except it's just in the New York area. And it outlawed any, you know, superhero, unsanctioned superhero activity. And so the new mayor, Luke Cage, he struck down that law, but he still wants to rebuild the Thunderbolts name. Because when Fisk was in charge, he had uh, a bunch of supervillains uh, that uh, had the Thunderbolts badge and were going around, you know, doing all of Fisk's uh, dirty work. Included uh, Taskmaster, U.S. Agent, uh, one of the symbiotes, and a few other people. So he has asked uh, Hawkeye to lead a new team of Thunderbolts to help restore the image. The team includes America Chavez. Uh, it also includes a new power man, a young, young guy power man. And what he does is apparently he takes the chi floating around in the air, and that's how he gets his super strength. So, interesting. And then you also have uh, the former purple girl, the purple man's daughter, who now goes by Persuasion. And that's a you know pretty powerful person to have yeah, on your team. That can make uh, your team's uh, job real easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, then... Y'all don't want to fight us anymore. No. Okay. <laughs> like having a, uh, you know... Jedi on steroids. And then you finally have a guy who looks suspiciously <laughs> like Cable. A young Cable. Yeah. 
but uh, we don't know much about him because everything about him is classified. I mean, this guy has a glowing eye and carries big guns. Big gun. I mean, I don't know about Hawkeye, but I don't know if I want to be leading a team if I don't know everything there is to know about my team members. So they are sent to round up the former Fisk uh, uh, Thunderbolts, and they end up with various results. Well, let's face it, the bad guy Thunderbolts don't want to be rounded up. Mm -mm. So Thunderbolts number one, our mention for this week, comes in with... After we rounded it up, he got three and a half shields. Three and a half shields out of five. All right. No, that's our one mention. Now, on to our top three for the week. All right. Surprise, surprise. There was a tie. So this week, to break the tie, I dug underneath the steps, and I found an old mousetrap game. Now, when E-Money was a kid... He would just build the mousetrap and then crank, 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 and make it start and watch it go all the way through all the stuff. He didn't really play the game. So I had to teach him how to play the game, and he proceeded to beat me. So, go figure. But at any rate, if you don't like the order of books one and two in this group of three, so at any rate, number three from AWA Upshot, the Joneses. Now, this is number five of a five-issue miniseries. All right. So, in this conclusion, or I should say building up to the conclusion, the Joneses family all have superpowers, and they are at odds with each other about what to do about them. Uh, the <laughs> mom just wants to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, keep her head down and wait for the whole, uh, you know, superhuman scare thing to blow over. And the dad wants to go out and be a superhero. Where, and the kids are uh, taking sides in the argument as well. Then their former neighbors slash best friends, they just want to be supervillains. You know, they think that they're the superior species now and they should be able to do whatever the heck they want. So that leads to a big confrontation in this issue. Uh, a lot of, lot of great action, a lot of uh, uh, use of... I always like it when the powers in a in a superhero fight complement each other. Like, uh, for example, the um, the fight in uh, uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. You know, Ghost powers versus uh, Ant Man and Wasp powers. You know that that was that made for a good fight scene. Also, you had in uh, the Incredibles two, um, Violet's powers, her powers of invisibility and force fields versus. I forgot her name, but she uh, basically she could uh, create uh, 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 what's the, portals. I don't know why I was struggling with that word. She could create portals out of anywhere. <clears throat> so that fight scene between the two of them made for uh, really good action. And same thing in the Joneses. So our number three pick for this week, the Joneses, number five of five, coming in with three and a half shields. Three and a half out of five. Coming up next, Frank Frazetta's Death Dealer. Now, this, this is a book that's got multiple covers, you know, variants. <clears throat> so far, I've always picked the actual Frank Frazetta artwork mm -hmm. for the cover. Wonder why I would do that. All right. So, in this <clears throat> issue, uh, Death Dealer is going to, uh, with his uh, mage ally, goes to rescue a young child and his mother who have been stolen or have been kidnapped, whatever, and it's supposed to be sacrificed upon an altar for, you know, whatever reason. But then, as it turns out, Death Dealer has been duped, and uh, things are not uh, what he thought they were. So, now the question becomes, what's he going to do about it? So, great artwork in this, and, you know, some a little bit of a character development on this as well, and... Death Dealer number four ends up with four shields after we rounded it up. Four shields rounded up. And then finally, our number one pick. Well, this one is a little bit of a dilemma. It's another one of those thick anniversary anthology books. Mm -hmm. But it says it's Amazing Fantasy starring Spider-Man number 1,000. How did we get to a thousand on Amazing Fantasy? Now, there were 15 in the original run, and then they did that mini series like last year or so, 
And that had like, what, four or five issues in it? Maybe five. So that brings us up to 20. Not sure how we got to 1,000. Me neither. But normally these anthology books are meh. You know, you might get an okay story or two. This one actually has some good stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, a couple different stories in this, but some of the uh, better ones. The second story. Uh, second story is story about Spider-Man when he's uh, in his 60s and he's still fighting the good fight and uh, he gets into a scuffle with a mugger and it's not that his spider sense failed him it's just that his reflexes aren't what they used to be and he gets shot yep. by a mugger mm -hmm. I mean this is like Uncle Ben all over again yep so <clears throat> in this issue you know he gets picked up by an ambulance and what was really interesting about this story was that the hospital and, you know, medical personnel, they have a protocol for, when Spider -Man. It, for when it comes to Spider-Man. When the paramedics are have him in the ambulance, they try to lift up his mask. And the, the other paramedic says, you know, we always leave it half on for Spider-Man. That's the rule. So then he gets to the hospital and they operate on him. And fortunately, Spider-Man has a healing factor. You might not know that. Now, obviously, it's not like, you know, Wolverine's no. healing factor. But he heals a heck of a lot faster than Me. your average Joe. Yeah. So, he's, he's looking around the hospital wondering, you know, where's, you know, where's Cap and Thor and all the other guys? Well, it turns out they're uh, fighting Thanos or something out in space. And he's like, so, you know, no one came to see me? And Doctor's like, oh, no, no, quite the opposite. And there's a line out the door and around the block of people waiting to see Spider-Man. Yep, gets you right in the feels. And, like, there isn't a single person in New York, I mean, he's 60 at this point, there isn't a single person in New York who Spider-Man hasn't saved or saved one of their loved Somehow ones. Somehow affected their lives. Yeah. So everyone is coming in one by one and sharing stories with Spider-Man about you know, how they saved him or, you know, what they did for them, what he did for how them. How much they appreciate and love him. Mm-hmm. So, once Spider-Man gets better and, uh, you know, he, he doesn't uh, check out uh, in a normal fashion, obviously, but one of the younger doctors, you know, who uh, sees MJ and the way they're talking to each other, and he doesn't come in and say, I'm his wife or whatever. No, but the way they talk that. to each other, it's, it's pretty obvious. And he says, we're leaving him in this woman's care, right? And he's like, she's clearly, and then the older doctor corrects him and says, we never write that down. Not for Spidey. We don't talk about Spidey. Mm -mm. And then you see all the get well cards when he gets home. Uh, you, got, you see cards from Jessica Jones, from Miles, Hawkeye, and from Wanda. There's more, but those are the only ones you can read. Mm -hmm. So... There's that one. Also, there was a story about... Second from the Last. Second from the Last, uh, where Neil Gaiman tells a story, and he kind of mixes that's right, in... That's right. Neil Gaiman of the Sandman. Mm -hmm. Neil Gaiman. And he writes a story of uh, him as a young boy who re reading Spider-Man for the first time, and he acts like Spider-Man is really there in the story, but, you know... Reading between the lines, you can, you know, get what really happens or what he says happens. And so, when he gets older, he is going up to an apartment with a friend of his, and they're going in to meet Steve Ditko. And uh, while they're talking, it's like he's acting like Spider-Man is there in the room with him. And he's saying how, uh, you know, we've met before, and, you know, the, the first time we met, I was a little kid. And Spider-Man is like, um, I meet a lot of people, sorry. And apparent, this is, um, this is the, uh, the, the uh, note he puts in at the end of the, at the, end of the story was um, Ditko gives him and his friend a couple of uh, original Spider-Man issues and he signs them for them. So in the, the message on the last page was, for Steve, Get, for Steve Ditko, with thanks for the signed comics and for the amazing Spider-Man. So, you know, that, that choked me up just a little bit there. And last story I'll talk about here. Uh, like I said, there, there's a few here. W one of them was a sequel 
to Amazing Fantasy 15, but not, not, what you're thinking. not in the way you think. So uh, this woman who you know looks like she's dressed like Cleopatra is... Uh, she looks like Big Barda to me. Okay. Uh, she is uh, calling herself the Witch Queen, and she uh, lands in this museum through this portal saying she's about to take everything over. So finally you find out that if you have a copy of Amazing Fantasy 15, or I think it would be in the reprint too, uh, there's a story at the in the back of the issue called The Man in the Mummy Case. And this story here is a sequel to that story. Not to the Spider-Man story. No. To the science fiction backup story. Right. So, I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. So... And he said, and it says, "This is what you've been waiting for for sixty years, right? Right, right. All right, sure." So that made for an interesting connection, and you know, Spider-Man wasn't in the original story, in the in the back of the issue, but they insert him into this one. Duh. Right. Well, all I gotta say is, in this particular anthology, even the not so good stories were at least okay. Mm-hmm. So, I thought this was a pretty good read. All right, so <clears throat> Amazing Fantasy 1000, somehow, our number one pick for this week, coming in at... Um, four Shields after we round it up. Four Shields, round it up. All right, so that is our issues from last week. Get them at your local comic book shop now if you haven't already. So, what do we have coming up this week? All right, we're back to our normal bazillion books that we're going to get. Um, still chasing Chip Zdarsky writing Batman, number 127 comes right. out. Um, Marvel's relaunching Alien. I don't know if it's just a new story arc, I assume it is, but it's number one. I didn't see any kind of subtitle, but, um, I mean, there's a lot of solid books coming out. There's a one-shot Batman, Dear Detective. Mm -hmm. Don't All know right. what it's about, but hey. Batman one shot. Okay. And Punisher and She Hulk both have their number six issues the same week. All right. So check them out at your local comic book shop right now. All right. So that does it for our <laughs> comic book reviews and previews. Now let's take a look at what you can expect for this weekend sales. All right. So this Saturday is E Money and the Old Man's Pop Up Comic Shop. It'll be September the 10th. It'll be September the 10th, and it is 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. 7002 Brookbend Way, and it's in Louisville, Kentucky, 40229. Hey, we're going to give a prize. Whoever drives the furthest. I'm just kidding. We're not going to do No, that. no. I mean, how would you? you know, like, I, I, came, like, I came from Texas. You know, you just say that. But you were here last week. No, we're not going to do that. All right, so, uh, and there's only seven uh, sales left this year, right? Three more in September, and there's four in October. Yep, so you got to get while the getting's good. So we're going to have all thousands of comic books starting at a dollar, and we got a lot of great key issues for you. And we just filled uh, some inventory in our what we call our frontline boxes, uh, comic books that are between two and nine dollars. And I believe we have a couple issues from the Chip Zdarsky Daredevil run. We do. Yep. I think it starts at number 21 through 26. Yeah, so we got a lot of, a lot of new issues in our inventory from there. And we have a couple of new uh, $10 and up issues. And we're going to have all kinds of toys, action figures, DVDs, and Blu-rays for you guys. All right, so on to some of our new stuff in our inventory. These comics, just, uh, we, we just added this past week. First up, we have Shang-Chi number one, and this is volume one, and this is the Jim Chung incentive cover right there. Then, you have another Shang-Chi number one. Different volume. Different volume. This is the Benjamin Sue incentive cover. I think that's volume two. Yes, volume two. All right, and then we have a Something is Killing the Children, number one, but it is the eighth printing, number one. So, sorry, it's not that 
Holy Grail well, first printing. It just amazes me that a book that's in its eighth printing, it still has value. Mm -hmm. So, eighth printing, issue number one. So, whereas you may not be getting the first printing, but if you're missing number one... Mm -hmm. Right there. And then finally, we have Star Wars The High Republic, number one. Right now, there. We've had this book a couple of times in the past, mm -hmm. and it sells... Fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got so many first appearances in there that I don't even try and list them. I oh yeah, I mean put, everyone, like everyone in this in this series is a brand new character. Yeah, because, I just put many first appearances. Right. I mean, it takes place like uh, in the distant past from the prequel trilogy. So you know, no one that's ever appeared in the um, in the movies. I think maybe Yoda does a cameo appearance in one issue. I don't remember. Like maybe maybe you get one character who uh, you are familiar with. But, yeah, uh, Star Wars High Republic, number one. All right, so there are your, that, that's your comic book preview for this week. Now on to our toy preview. These we just got in either last week or maybe the week before. First up, you have, anybody remember the uh, Bucky O'Hare comic series? It was published by a company called Continuity. Mm -hmm. And this is the Space Adventures of Bucky O'Hare, the Toad Wars. And this figure is Toad Borg. Good old Toad Borg. Mm -hmm. And he's one of those, I think he's 90s. Yeah, 1990, right there. Then, now this uh, character is a bit of a mystery for me because I know... That there's a version of his action figure from the original uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line. But this one is not Ninja Turtles. This is Stan Sakai's Usagi Yojimbo. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. But uh, really back in the 90s, Usagi was hot for about a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a fair warning, this particular blister does have some water damage to it. But uh, the figure inside the plastic, perfect. Yeah. And, you know, still has a lot of value to him. So, uh, there's some action figures. And then, we have a, kind of an oddball thing that came in this last week. We have a couple of... Oddball for us. For us, yeah. We got a couple of lunch boxes. First up, we have the Care Bears lunch box from 1983. And then... From 1992, you have an Uncanny X-Men lunchbox. Now, I know what you're thinking. First thing you want to ask is, does it come with the thermoses? Well, Care Bears, no. X-Men, yes. Let's see that sucker. Okay. You know, there it is right there. Care Bear, or uh, X-Men thermos. Now, I actually had one of these lunch boxes as a kid. I think mine was uh, Jurassic Park. I think I used my thermos once. I don't remember what I had in it, but I used it once. I thought it was a pain in the butt, and I never used it again. Well, also, if you got your thermos in there, you got less room for food. Right. And, I you want know, more food. And, you know, most kids, you know, they had a, you know, a juice box or a Capri Sun or something like that for their drink, for their lunch. I always just went and bought milk. That, too. So it kind of makes me wonder, like, how many kids actually use these things. Well, it could be why it's so hard to find thermoses for lunch. Probably. Yeah. All right. So, like I said, X-Men yes, Care Bears no on the uh, thermoses. All right. So we have all these things available. And then I have one more round of things. <clears throat> A couple of these are... Toy Fair exclusive action figures. Can't get them anywhere else except, you know, from eBay and, you know, guys like us. First up, you have Havoc from the X-Men Toy Fair exclusive. Scott Summers' brother. Mm -hmm. Then you have Morph, not the X-Men member Morph. This is, this is a bad guy. Morph from the Age of Apocalypse. So it's a DC character. Age of Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse. No, it says Marvel right here. Oh, so, I think I uh, remember him. maybe was he one of uh, Apocalypse's acolytes or four horsemen? No, if, if anybody knows, you know, tell us, you know, who this who this morph is. He could be the the uh, the other morph. I mean, he's a shapeshifter, so mm -hmm. why the heck not? And then finally, 
we have Daredevil in his original red and yellow suit right there. Now, I'll tell you what. It won't break the old man's heart if nobody wants this one. I might keep it. <laughs> All right, so all these and much more are going to be available this Saturday, 7002 Brookbend Way, Louisville, Kentucky, and it's 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. this Saturday. What else we got going on? All right, so if you can't make it out to our sale Saturday, because, you know, I, I hear a lot of people tell us that, you know, they work Saturdays. Uh, you know, they'll come by when they finally have a Saturday off or a vacation day. You need to get your priorities in order. Right. So if you're working Saturday, or maybe you just don't live in the Louisville area, we have another option for you. Called you plane ticket. No, well, plane that. Ticket is, I mean, also an option. Hey, one of our best customers last week was a guy who was out of town, mm -hmm. was trying to figure out how to get all the toys he bought home. Yep. He finally decided to UPS them. Mm -hmm. Oh, did he do that? That's what he was I thought he was going to get another carry-on. No, he decided to UPS them. Okay. All right, so another option. <clears throat> is you can download the WhatNot app. And uh, if you're wondering what WhatNot is, WhatNot is a streaming auction service. You download the app, and if you're planning to be a buyer, you can uh, put in different categories for things that you're into. You can uh, put in you know, action figures, it can be comic books, it could be uh, sports cars, you can even do clothing. Whatever you're into, and then a list of streams will come up in uh, those categories. And all these different sellers are looking to sell you stuff. Uh, some some sellers actually do buy it now for their auctions. I haven't figured that one out. You know what? I think what they'll do is they'll stream and they say, "Hey, I have this item available right now. It's twelve dollars. You can uh, get it in the uh, the store inventory if you click on it." We don't do that. We don't we don't do buy it now for whatnot. We actually do. We may. We might in the future, but we actually <laughs> do auctions. And what it does, what happens on whatnot is, you know, I bring up this item and says, uh, all right, it's available now. I'm going to start the bidding at, you know, $12 or whatever. And uh, per people put in their bids and the auction without anyone bidding will last anywhere from like, you know, 20 seconds to a minute, you know, maybe longer if the seller wants to, but usually it's pretty short. And, uh, you know, if you can't snipe, that's, Kind of the key like things that. about whatnot, because if you try to bid at the last second, the uh, timer will go back up to ten seconds, so it gives other people a chance to put their bids in. So that's how whatnot works. And this Sunday, the old man and I are going to be streaming. We're going to be streaming at six p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and every Sunday we do something a little different. We we uh, make a new theme. We've done uh, diecast sales. We did uh, Marvel one time. We did. Uh, almost exclusively Marvel Legends stuff. This this week, we are doing a DC action figure auction with heavy emphasis on Batman. The Batman. Yeah. We have a lot of Batman inventory, yeah. and we want right. to yeah, get all that inventory out to you guys. So tune in this Sunday on Whatnot. You can follow us before the auction even starts. You can find us, E-Money and the Old Man, no spaces, and you can click follow, and you'll be notified whenever we have an auction. But right now, our auctions are pretty much every Sunday at 6 p.m. So now, once the pop-up shop ends, we might end uh, October, we might might add a new expand. one. Right. So be sure to tune in for our all DC auction this Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on whatnot. And like I said, a lot of Batman on this auction. <laughs> All right, so that is our sales for this weekend. Hope you can join us for both of them. Now, let's go back upstairs into the garage with Thor. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode. So, uh, this weekend, you have our pop-up comic shop Saturday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., 7002 Brookbend Way. And then, Sunday, our whatnot auction at 6 p.m., we're going to be having an all-DC show with a lot of uh, Batman on top of it. So, uh gonna be a fun show all right say say bye to thor and don't forget to subscribe help us reach a thousand subscribers all right we got guys we'll see you on the next one excelsior true believers the time has come to say good night good night